KRXO and KRXO HD Oklahoma City, a product of Tyler Media, celebrating 50 years as Oklahoma's media company. Now, the big story of the day on 1077 The Franchise. Desmond Mason is in studio with us today for an hour. It's the Desmond Mason Show. We always love having him in. We have said today, and I am just now springing this on Desmond as we speak, but uh, we have done, I told people that I didn't think you'd have a problem with it, Des. I said, throw a hashtag on Twitter of Ask Mason. And we're going to do an Ask Mason segment today on the show. I think I thought you'd be all right with that. <laughs> I'm cool with that. I said basketball or non-basketball whatever related. Is, yeah, whatever. whatever you're going to ask. Um, so we'll get to the Thunder last night in just a second. But I am interested on, on your weirdest round of golf and cart partner. <laughs> and mo- and Are we mo- just going to start it off like that? Yeah, I want to know. I want to know. I teased it, too. I, I, te- <laughs> I, told on, I said on air, I, I said... Uh, Desmond Mason has a funny story about his weirdest round oh of golf and car partner and, and most uncomfortable conversation ever. <laughs> All right, so I want to. I love stories about oh, uncomfortable I, conversations. I know. I hit you on text with this. You like? Yep. That's how we're gonna start. We gotta start. Yep. We gotta start. Uh, with that. So I was. I was. Let me see. I was about four years in the NBA. Um, had been traded to to Milwaukee, and I go back for the summer to Seattle. Detlef Shrimp was. A, he, he used to have this big event, and so I was part of this golf event with Brent Barry and some other guys, and so. Um, they would put a player with, you know, three other people and maybe another celebrity. They put me with these two guys and this guy named Eric the Red. Eric the Red. <laughs> Eric yes. the Red. So I'm with Eric, and we're playing carp eating, and he was telling me about, you know, all the types of things, he eating food and all the competitions. And I asked him, kind of like, how do you eat the game? I'm like, okay. He said, every we're going to, you know, toss a bottle of water, okay. open it. You're going to chug it. Chug it. Fat gone. I'm just like, dude. Next hole, same thing. He's like, you want to know how I do this? And I'm like, yeah, man, you got to explain it. So, what, you know, as soon as you start the road, and the passenger's <laughs> come out. Stop it. I do It's like, you told him to stop talking. <laughs> I'm talking, man. This is ridiculous. Like I'm done. Yeah, 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 I'm done. I, told I wanted him, to know. I'm like this. <laughs> and then we watched him eat everybody else's food on the table. Really? It's 12 plates of food. On the table, all leftovers. Hey, everybody's leftovers. That's just food. rude. Well, and it's gross. Yeah, yeah, gr- <laughs> gross and rude. <laughs> it's gross. It's crude. Yeah, it's like the the fat off the steak that nobody. Oh, uh, yeah. well, that was Eric it, so oh God bless. So yeah, it was uh, it was the hands down the most uncomfortable conversation I ever had with a man in the golf cart uh, on the golf course. The one competitive eater story I can tell you. <laughs> this is I, and that doesn't this doesn't top what you have, but. <laughs> um, <laughs> I, w- I went to this, uh, you know, this, of course, I was, this was two years ago, I think, and I was about 420 pounds at the time. And uh, so I am, uh, I'm, they, of course, they asked me, you know, ask the big guy if he wants to be in the competitive eater contest. This casino was opening up a new bar, a new sports bar. And so they were like, uh, inside the casino, and you come be a part of a VIP event with we'll some other people there, and you're going to be one of the celebrity eaters. You're going to go up against a professional eater. And I'm like, okay, I mean, you know, whatever, I'll, I'll do it. So they have this huge thing. It's like, it's like a ten pound, you know, uh, roast beef something or another. And I mean, I, of course, I don't get through it as fast as this other guy does. And uh, so he just scarfs it down. It was a ton of food. Scarfs it down in about. It took him about ten minutes. And of course, I quit. Right. I mean, after that, everybody else just kind of quits except this one guy. This one other guy who I think he was just, he was kind of like this, I guess, is this even a thing to be an amateur eater? <laughs> like an amateur? I would say so. Uh, like an amateur professional eater? That's, I know that's an oxymoron, but you know what I mean. Like you're just like an amateur eater, contest eater. He was going to keep on going until he finished this 10 pounds worth of food. He was like, he was not going to stop. So, we're all having fun at this point. I'm having drinks and everybody else is having drinks there. And, you know, we're having little hors d'oeuvres and stuff, whatever I can fit down. It's a fun time. An hour later, we're looking over at him and he, he's got this face like he's going to die, but he's eating those last couple french fries. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, man, come on. Like, you should, like, why are you still eating? But it was a pride thing for him. And from that point forward, I, I made sure that, you know, I want to be prideful in everything I do. But I made sure that to tell myself that pride was never going to be a thing. 
when it came to eating. <laughs> it cannot be. <laughs> Just forget about the pride. Like like you, like you wanted to learn about the water and the, and the hot dogs and all that stuff. Like no, because you want to be you want to be able to do it yourself. No, like no, yeah. I'm out. Um, all right, so we're gonna do some ask Mason here in a little bo- here in a little while. Hashtag ask Mason if you want to jump in on Twitter and ask him a question. We've already got a good number of questions that we'll ask him in just a little bit here on the franchise. And of course, in the last segment, we'll we'll uh, we'll have him do his uh, an- another update to his canvas over here. And if you want to, you can go back on my Twitter page at Big Easy. We did a little pick stitch of uh, what it looked like. He's painted on it twice now. Uh, and we have given you, it's the same canvas, and we've given you what it looked like after the first round and after the second round, and then we'll do it again today. If you want to take a look at that, at Big Easy, B-I-G-E-Z on Twitter. And again, Ask Mason, hashtag Ask Mason, and we'll do some of those a little bit later. All right, so we were talking before we came on. Um, the Thunder. Um, I have been today, in fact, do you have the... the dun, dun, dun. Do you have that? Do you have the dun, dun, dun? Um, I was doing this earlier just for just for effect. We'll play it for you. But I was like, you know, okay, right before this, they had won four or five. Yeah. Okay. Now they've gotten blown out in the last two games, and it's not been pretty. But I, I've been mocking the fans that have been going nuts. I'm like, do you really? Like, oh my gosh, they lost. <laughs> oh! <laughs> right. Like, you know, what I mean, do we really have like? And so I kind of bounced that off you, and you're like, and you were kind of more towards the middle, I think. Like, yeah, you start questioning yourself, right? Or- yeah, yeah. It's I don't know. It's you know I, I look at it at how they play and and how they're approaching the games. Golden State, you know, Golden State played well. They're a really good basketball team. So I just think it's a bad matchup for Oklahoma City across the board with Golden State. Sacramento was just really not an excuse for the Sacramento game. You know, they didn't play well. They didn't they didn't step out on the floor prepared to play. We talked about it, um, you know, in pregame last night with John and David. And we just said, you know, the, the way they lose the game is not to show up. And, and as a team, they didn't show up. So right now you can't, if you're Oklahoma City, you can't have that. You can't 500 and a few games below because you got some tough games coming up. You know, you got to, the ones that you should win, you got to win. And, um, right now they're just not playing, you know, consistent basketball across the board. And you can see some of the new guys and some of the bench guys just, you know, they don't have it going and Serge is, you know, he's one day's good, one day's bad. You know, it just kind of depends on what's going on with the game. But he needs to get more in the flow of the game. And uh, those those other supporting cast guys, they have to be consistent. Can you, can you tell me if uh, it's – is there anything that you would – take me inside a locker room after that game – like it doesn't, or, or does it even matter? Are they just over it? Um, you know, Scott is a coach. Scott is definitely going to, you know, be, he's the type of guy that's kind of like, hey, um, you got to move on to the next game, you know, so on and so forth. But um, the players, they, they want to win basketball games. They're not, you know, they don't like to lose. They don't like to, um, you know, feel like they didn't play well, feel like they didn't compete. Um, but Scott's going to say, listen, we got another game coming up soon. We got to, you know, prep for the next game. Um, at the end of the day, you know, the players are upset because they lost the game and they feel like they shouldn't have lost the game. Desmond Mason with us here on 1077 The Franchise. Um, all right, so Dion Waiters. Um, you, I mean, you went on him. I, well, first, let me start here. Would you have played him last night? Um, I would put him on the floor, yeah, just to, for, you know, for him to get comfortable. And if you're going to put him on the floor, you put him on the floor against a team like Sacramento, which I'm sure when you go into the game, you feel like it's a game that you have a really good chance of winning. So, you know, I wouldn't put him in the game against San Antonio or Golden State, but... Against Sacramento, I think it was a good time to get him on the floor with some of the other guys. I kind of thought, like, with an A-type, and tell me, you're going to tell me I'm wrong here, and I want to know why, um, that with with an alpha personality like he is, that throwing him into the fire immediately, you know, depending on his demeanor, it might ruffle some feathers just, you know, like, like, hey, man, you're not going to come in here and just start running this show or even running this second unit, like, why don't you just sit on the bench for a game and just see how we do it? You know what I mean? Like, I thought maybe that was the case. But, um, why is that not the right way to do it? No, I just think it's, you know, getting him on the floor as soon as possible and getting him comfortable. You need him. If you're going to trade for him and you think he's going to play minutes, then you need to get him on the floor as soon as possible. And, again, against a team that you feel like you should beat, you want to have that guy on the floor because they can be more aggressive offensively. Um, they can just be more aggressive throughout the course of the game because it's a team that you feel like you should beat. Obviously, they didn't play very well last night and they lost against – 
Sacramento. But, you know, again, I wouldn't have put him in the game against Golden State because that's a team that you have to be clicking on all cylinders. You don't have time for figuring a guy out with the rook. You know, put him in where you feel like uh, he can go out and he can compete and play some solid minutes and it's not really going to hurt too much. But How do you think he played? You know, you can't really get – Scott said it yesterday in the interview. You can't gauge him off of one game. Um, just like if he goes out and has 20, you can't say, oh, my God, he's the new James Harden. Mm-hmm. You know, you can't do that. So, um, you know, I don't want to gauge him off of one game, but I just think, you know, I, it's hard for me to see how he fits again, just like Kevin Martin. He's a guy that likes to have, have the ball in his hand when he scores. He's not kind of like a penetrating pitch guy consistently. But um, he's not going to have the ball in his hands on his team, so he's got to get used to that. What would you think, by the way, he mentioned James Harden. It just reminded me. What? <laughs> he he wanted number 13. Yeah. And the Thunder said no. I'm sure they did say no. I'm sure 13 Why? won't be worn again. <laughs> just, I mean, like, you just, I mean, you just, like, we don't want no recollection of him or what? Like, How many players wore 23 after Portland didn't draft Michael Jordan? <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you're, like, like, is that is that out of respect or is that out of, like, I mean, I don't get it. Like, I, I, I guess I don't get it. That's out of that wound is closed. Please don't wear that number. I'm just telling you, if he wears the number and he comes out, that's the first thing people gonna think. Oh my God, his new James Harden. Look, he's got James Harden number. Oh, Why oh, oh. That? So this is like a PR thing. Yeah, you just you know it's just you know I just think it's you don't do it. You know you just don't do it, especially because James Harden. You know he was a really good player here. He's a great player. I mean you, he is one of the most dynamic players, scores in the NBA. And Oklahoma City had to make a decision, and they chose the latter. And he's in Houston doing his thing. And you look back and go, man, if we only had him coming off the bench still. You know, could he be the man with Ginobili, but much better, you know, in the long run? Um, or could he be our two, Russell the one, Kevin the three, Serge the four? Who cares who the five is? It doesn't really matter after that. <laughs> you know, you think about it. That's, that's what right. you look at. You know, oh, and Tabo's gone too, and he's playing really good in Atlanta as well. Oh, lost him as well. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> that would have been funny. Like, okay, I'll take Tabo's number. They go, no, no, that one's taken too. Can't do it. <laughs> like, Andre Roberts is like, I want Tabo's number. They're like, yeah, yeah, you know. No, you're, not, no. you're not a Tabo defender. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's so bizarre. All right, so um, so they, they, they play Utah at home tomorrow night. Now, um, do, does, does this sort of game, like – being on the outside now, as much as one former NBA player can be on the outside, which is not to, which is to say not much, but being on the outside now, do you do you expect this to carry over now? Like, I mean, or do you, are you in this spot where you're like, I know they're going to play well in this game. It's Utah and it's at home. Or are you like, are you even wavering? Like, I'm not sure, man. Like, I mean, I, if if I was a gambling man, I would say that they're going to win the game. You know, do I think they're going to blow Utah out? You know, it's a maybe. Uh, Oklahoma City a couple years ago, I'd be like, they're about to run through Utah. It's going to be ugly. But, you know, now I'm kind of like, well, they tend to let teams hang around a little bit. And when you let a team hang around, they get their confidence, you know, you run the risk of getting beat. So do I think they're going to win the game? Yeah, for sure. Do you do you have any – why do you – like, in when you dig down real deep, why do you have that feeling that, like – where why has that feeling changed for you? Where where a Utah comes to town, and you're like they're gonna blow them out, to, and it's changed to, eh, well, I mean they might they're probably gonna win, but it's, it might it'd probably be close. Well, I mean it's a, it's a, a couple of reasons. Well, a few reasons for me. One is they're not the defensive team as a whole as they used to be, you know. And I don't want to say it's just Tabo, you know. As a whole, they're not the defensive team. Nick Collison doesn't play as many minutes as I think he should play. Personally, I think his energy and what he brings to the game um, is a positive for Oklahoma City. Perimeter defense is not what it was. Um, Interior defense surge is more on the perimeter now with the way teams are stretching guys out and so on and so forth. That It takes him away from the basket. He had a great blocking night last night, but that hasn't been very consistent. He's kind of hit a miss. Right. Um, A lot more miss. And then Kendrick, you got him coming off the bench now, who's that great pick and roll defender. You know, he's not playing the minutes he used to, and he's not with that starting unit. So I think the defense is not as good. Offensively, guys used to move and cut, and, you know, there used to be actual offense. You know, again, we think James Harden, him and Nick used to play a little handoff pick-and-roll backdoor thing. Tabo used to slash across the lane. There was a lot of pick-and-rolls with Kevin and Russell at the high post. All these things that were going on a couple years ago doesn't happen now. It's all ISO basketball, and everybody else stands around and go, please do it, Russell. Please do it, Kevin. There's no offensive flow as well. So I think those things, um, along with just kind of off-and-on intensity, you know, makes it worth they, – they tend to let teams hang around. And, again, you let teams hang around the NBA, you know, you can lose. Well, 
let me let me focus on the ISO of that. Everybody wants to put blame in that situation on, you know, in those situations on Scott Brooks, but is it really? I mean, like, who who is putting this team into these isolation situations? Well, isolation situations, you know, sometimes they happen organically. Um, sometimes players break plays. Um, they feel like they got a mismatch, and but there's nothing wrong with the ISO. It's how you get to the ISO. Is to me is what's the big issue because. If you just do a flat ISO, that means you got eight people watching two people play. Right. It's too much defense. Um, but if you move guys around and you start to get some misdirection on the backside of a play, then you got and guys. And then you move. go. And then you then you play ISO basketball. People are moving, cuts starting to happen. Um, and that's the difference. In Oklahoma City, with Oklahoma City, it's just like it's high post ISOs. They run a little pin down dirk type of play for Kevin at the top. And I'm like, why are you running a play twenty feet, twenty five feet away from the basket with Kevin, who has a mismatch, a guy that's much smaller than him, for a long jump shot. You know, how about getting him into the post? But he has to fight for post position because there's no misdirection to get him closer to the basket. Now he has a post up that's 19, 18, 19 feet, and he's facing up and playing one on one, and everybody's watching him play. To me, I, I think that's a little bit of Scott. The players have to actually run the play and quit breaking play so much, and you can see when they do it. You know, they just kind of, I, I can see when they do it. I don't know if everybody else can, but I can see when they're breaking plays. And, and a lot of the plays I still know. But that's on the players. They have to make sure they execute. Did you feel uh, at all last night, I, I, and basically this is just uh, Desmond Mason with us, and, and what I do usually with De Desmond when it comes to basketball is I uh, I bounce the ideas that I'm having during games off of him, and he tells me whether I am uh, <laughs> a, a, an idiot or not an idiot. And usually I end up being an idiot, but I'll try again. Um, I My theory so far on this team this year is that um, – that this team, I, all they talk about is defense, and I don't even know if they really care. I just don't know. I wonder if it's just become a talking point. They're so used to talking, you know, just saying those little buzzwords and buzz phrases that that athletes do when they talk to the media. Oh, you know, oh, that's a good basketball team, and oh, we got to play really hard tonight. And we got to play great. And and one of the ones that they always use around here is defense, 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 defense. We really, we, it, it depends on our defense. We got to be great defensively, et cetera, et cetera. And really, I just think they kind of say it without even thinking about it. But then they go on the floor, and I, I think that my, my theory is that their defense is solely predicated on how well they are playing offensively and not the other way around. Yeah, there's a lot of teams like that. You know, offense dictates defense, and, and you know, and most, like, you know, championship teams is defense the other dictates way around. offense. Yeah, and so, you know, you ever since you were little, defense wins championships. You know, your defense should make your offense. You know, blah, blah, blah. Defense is effort. You know, all these things you hear from little bitty basketball. And not very many people go out and play defense. Defense is a lot of effort. It takes a lot of effort to play defense every single possession for 24 minutes if need be. But which doesn't happen in the NBA. You really got to play defense for about 10 to 12 seconds. I'm sorry, 10 to 12 seconds, not 24 minutes, 24 seconds. But 10 to 12 seconds is real defense. After that, teams bail out, go into isos and pick and rolls and shoot long jump shots. Just But the 10 to 12 seconds, just play good defense. People say it because it's the good thing to say. You know, it's the right thing to say. And the fans would be like, oh, that's right, defense, defense. But then there's a lot of other things in basketball that, you know, teams do well and don't do well. But defense is effort. And you can tell in two or three possessions if that team is going to play good defense that night or not. I mean, the first, the first, the start of the game, you can tell if they're going to play good defense or not. Just watch. <laughs> watch their body language. And you'll look and you'll go, they'll be giving up layups all night tonight or wide open jump shots all night tonight. Because when you got all the energy at the beginning of the game and you're not tired, and you can't contest a jump shot, and you can't stop a guy from driving past you, you're, long probably, night. you're not going to do it in the fourth quarter. Right. Long night. Long night for sure. Um, I certainly felt that way with Reggie last night. Reggie was uh, as good as he was offensively last night. And he and I thought he was offensively, but my goodness. Well, I mean, just go on. Whenever, uh, uh, blanking on his name, um, had 28 points last night. I'm now I'm totally blanking on his name. Oh, well, point guard. Um, but um, to, like it was just every time. Like I'm just gonna go. Like he knew. Like I'm just gonna drive right past Reggie. Like I'm just gonna drive. Like and and nobody's ready for that. No no help is ready for that when somebody's gonna drive right by. Like you said a million times. Nobody's ready for that. Like they'll be ready on a pick and roll to yeah. help you out on defense or something like that. But if you're just gonna get beat one on one, like. Kendrick Perkins ain't ready to come on over and help you out, like it, or, or Serge Ibaka. Like sometimes they're not going to be there for your help. Like, and I, I felt like you know those straight line drives, 
uh, all night on Reggie Jackson last night. Good night. They're, and they're hard to guard. But, you know, I, I challenge every fan that's watching the game, whether you're sitting in the arena watching on TV, watch the first five minutes of the game on the defensive end of the floor if you're watching Oklahoma City, and it's going to tell you if they're going to play defense that night or not. Go to state game. I knew after the first three plays that they will get blew out. Really? Steph Curry drove to the basket doing trick dribbles and wide open layups. The first three possessions. I've got uh, from now you on. The first you got three okay. You've got to start sending out tweets. I'm telling you after it, three plays because I, I want to know. I want to see how good you do on when this. When he he went to the left and did a fake behind the back, behind the between the leg dribble and did a left hand layup <laughs> and nobody contested it. The second play of the game, I said to myself, Dan, that they're not going to guard the pick and roll well. And Russell is letting him straight line drive to the basket. He's doing fun dribbles. He's doing park dribbles in an NBA game against a, against Oklahoma City, who is you know historically a really good basketball team. That means they have no respect. Period. And to me, you hit him the first play. He goes to the basket. You have Serge or Steven come across, and you rock him at the basket. I promise you, trick dribble stop. But guys are just letting guys go to the basket for layups. There's no respect. And that's because they know that Oklahoma City is not going to guard the perimeter. Uh, Darren Collison, by the way. Yeah. And I'm totally blanked on his name, but uh, he had a field day last night. I thought they actually did an okay job on uh, DeMarcus Cousins. For as bad as they played collectively, the Thunder last night, for some reason they did a good job on DeMarcus Cousins. But uh, every, even though he did, I guess he did go to the free throw line a bunch. I think I think he finished with like 23 points. But, um, but from the field, he was abysmal. Um, all right, Desmond Mason's in here. We're going to do some Ask Mason. Hashtag Ask Mason on Twitter. You can also tweet us your questions. I'm sorry, text us your questions. Uh, 88474. Type in the word text, then a space. Then, uh, then then throw us an Ask Mason. Make sure you put, like, an Ask Mason on there so we know that that's what you're uh, you're trying to do there. And we will, uh, we will start doing those in the next segment with Desmond Mason next on the franchise. Now back to Zach McCright and Todd Listenby on Oklahoma's new sound for sports, 1077, the franchise. Got a lot of Ask Masons on Twitter. Hashtag Ask Mason. We're going to do that. We figured we'd do a little bit of that today. And then in the next segment, we're going to uh, either we'll continue with that or maybe we'll do a little uh, a little take it or leave it while, uh, you know, me and you, Jeff, while, while uh, Desmond's in the background. And he'll do his own take it or leave it while he's in the background doing his painting and all that stuff. Um, but uh, we'll, we always have fun with Desmond Mason. We like to do it. So, um Actually, you know what? Let's come up with some crappy uh, hashtag Ask Mason music to put behind this <laughs> rough face. Let's do that. Let's let's see if we can't. Actually, go in the be- go in my, uh, the. Uh, I bet if you find it in over in the maestro, I bet you can. Uh, if you type in bed, I think there's a couple in our in our uh, a couple new ones, at least that are fun for me. I like them. But uh, those are coming to America in the background. Ooh, <laughs> that was such a I, good. They, I believe the children are future. <laughs> so good. <laughs> um, all right, so let's do a couple of these while he's getting the music here. Let me let me go ahead and type in here a little. Ask Mason. Okay, here we go. We got a good number. Good job, everybody. All right, let's do this. Uh, this is from Zach. Zach Sullivan. Does D Mason remember playing a pickup basketball game one on one at the park in? Gotibo, Oklahoma, circa 1995. Go to Bo. Oklahoma, Go to Bo. Right? I have yeah, no idea. Absolutely. I do remember that. Do you? I was there, <laughs> yep. I was there with friends, uh, Brett Porter and um, the Hawkins family. Yeah. It's, that's country, man. Did Ra- you? Rainy Mountain. Who did you play against? I don't know. I mean, I played against. I was. I remember Maybe it was against this won. guy. He may, maybe I'm. Zach Sullivan. Did I'm you win? Gonna, I'm going to say I won. Yeah, he won. You lost, Zach. Sorry, buddy. <laughs> Good yeah. job, though, Zach. Way to bring up bad memories, but <laughs> Zach, good job. Zach was probably eight since I'm like 37 right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Ryan, um, what is the game that sticks out the most as a blowout loss that Desmond endured? Uh, blowout loss. Hmm. I had a few of those. <laughs> <laughs> really? Yeah, we did. Yeah, it wasn't. They weren't. Uh, well, there we, uh, go. there we go. That's some good stuff. Uh, Milwaukee Bucks. Um we were playing the Lakers in Milwaukee, and um, we weren't expecting to win very many games. 
And uh, obviously Kobe was, you know, Kobe at the time, but they were a really good team. And he, uh, they, they came in and beat us up pretty bad at home. He. Yeah. <laughs> it pretty much was a he. <laughs> we all tried to guard him. It just didn't work. We rotated about five guys on him. It didn't work that game. Um, I guess we kind of asked this one, but for those who, who didn't hear, this is from Daniel. Do you agree with Waiters playing last night? Uh, yeah, I think he needed to be on the floor a little bit. I mean, it was a good time for him to get him out there on the floor against a team they felt they could beat. Again, hashtag Ask Mason. We're asking questions of Desmond Mason uh, for this segment, and maybe longer, depending on how many we got. I Let's see. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. Right, we got a good seven or eight here um, that, uh, that we can ask in the short term here. All right, let's see. What else do we got here? What's better? This is from Billy. What's better, being a kick-ass ball player or a kick-ass artist? Oh, that's uh um, I'm going to say artist. I mean, I love basketball. Basketball was huge for me um, in my life, and it was a huge part of my life. But, you know, I just have a passion for art that's unexplainable. So I'm going to say art. Better college dunker, D. Mason or Markel Brown? <laughs> what kind of question is that? <laughs> me. <laughs> who's, the, who's the guy? Do you point at anybody and go, yeah, I would lose to him? Oh, Vince Carter. Is there anybody else? Like uh, you kind of went to the top of the heap. Yeah, there. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you know what? Jason Richardson beat me, so I have to say Jason. Yeah, Richardson. that's right. Yeah. That's right. You are your own. Your own one. Well, are you one? Are you one and one? Against Jason Richardson is the only guy to beat me, though. <laughs> that's it. That's the only dunk contest. You never went up against ever. Vince. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> he would have won. No, I'll go ahead and say. <laughs> <that>. <laughs> um, what is the? Give me the the best dunk that you have not been a part of. Um, that you've ever seen. The, the Vince Carter. Three reverse Olympic? 360 oh. windmill. See, I'm thinking, contest. I'm thinking Olympics or was it well, world the, championships? The that jump was... over, that was big, but like no one had ever did a reverse one hand cuff windmill. It was ridiculous. It was the most ridiculous dunk I've ever seen. Let's see. Or not seen. <laughs> JP on Twitter, what is your best bedlam story when you were at OSU? Those were the best bedlam games. Oh, they were awesome. Um, in Norman, um, I think it you've was, told uh, this yeah, one before. Yeah, it was the end of the game, and I faked the run-up. Um, oh, no, I, I haven't was, heard Yeah, this. so uh, it was the end of the game. We were up, like, two or four or something, and I was on the outside wings, and we were taking the ball out long ways, going the full length of the court, and so we used to always do this double run-up, and I would always break the play and take, like, three steps like I'm going up, and I would take off the full court. Brett Robis threw me a baseball pass. Uh, football pass. I caught it. Well, it, it bounced on the ground. I picked it up and just went up to dunk it. And Ryan, I can't remember. I keep forgetting his name. Um, Somebody he, will get us. He fouled me. Um, I dunked it. Got an and one. And I mean, I was young too. I just went crazy. It was. And we beat. We won in, in uh, Norman. So it was a fun game. Look at you in Norman. Uh, let's Ryan see. Ryan Humphreys. That's him. Ryan Humphreys. Uh, let's see. Uh, this is from Michael. Would practice. Wow. This is an interesting question. Would practicing three-quarters court shots tend to develop a hitch on young shooters' motions? <laughs> no. No, it doesn't. That is uh, it's very interesting that that question was asked. Um, from Whitehead, if the Thunder trade Jackson, who do you think it would be for? Um, not very much. You know, again, he's uh, look, I think it's 2.3 or $2.1 million dollars. Um, on his contract, and so you know you can't get a lot in return from that unless you're packaging those guys up. Maybe Jeremy Lamb, maybe Perry Jones. Then you can probably go out and get another guy. But if you had to predict of the current roster, the trade deadline I think is the 19th of February. Who, if anyone, would not be on the roster? Jeremy Lamb, probably. Um, I just don't see Reggie. Reggie? I don't see Reggie being here either. Yeah. You know, I kind of see some sort of a package deal, possibly. Um, but, you know, if anybody's going to go, it's going to be, I think, either both of one of those two guys for sure. Uh, let's see. Paul Pierce, this is from Matt. Paul Pierce said in an article that Melo was the toughest player to guard. Who would you say is the toughest? Uh, it was When I played, it was T-Mac. Tracy really? Brady. Yeah. I mean, six foot nine. He was, it was nobody like him. You know, six nine with that athleticism and handle and, you know, shot. and I mean, he had everything, mid-range. You know, 30 feet. He, he, I mean, he could do just about anything. And he was just relentless on offense. You know, he wasn't a good defender. But offensively, I mean, he was so hard to guard. Um, 
who did you who did you just have your run against always? Like the same guy. Like I don't care what he does, I will always beat him. Uh, Rip Hamilton. Really? Him and Richard Jefferson. Yeah. Those guys, we always got into some sort of a fight or argument. We always got technical fouls. We were on the floor together. It was the only time I got tossed out of, you know, games against those guys. You know, it was, it was, I, I, I never, I gave five to everybody. And I was always okay. I mean, I was a good guy. I gave five to everybody. And they were, whenever they were on the floor, don't touch my hand. You and I, we have nothing to say to each other. <laughs> Play basketball. Why? What, was there something that sparked yeah, that? Yeah, a couple of instances, guys. You know, there was some. There was a big. We played Jersey in a playoff series, and you know, fight kind of. Kenyon Martin was a guy I played growing up with in, in high in a AAU basketball in Dallas, and so just you know some arguments and some scuffles broke out. And Richard Jefferson, I mean, uh, yeah, Richard Jefferson, he tries to play tough. He's not really tough, and. <laughs> So it really annoyed me. And then Rip Hamilton elbowed Michael Red in the throat during a playoff series as oh. well. And, and Michael was just, like, not a bad guy. But and Rip never cut his fingernails, so he used to just cut you up with his fingernails. Oh, and, oh that's I mean, that's yeah. reason enough to hate the guy. So and we always got into it. Rip Hamilton's mom came up and talked to me after the game. She's like, now, what are you and my baby getting into it for? I was like, ma'am, it's just basketball. Uh, that was a very good answer by you. That that could have gone a lot of different ways yeah, there. Yeah, I kept it together. And she didn't like swing at you or anything, did she? No, she she was so nice. She walked up to me and she was like, "Just man, what are you, my baby? What are you getting into it for?" And I'm like, "It's just basketball." But under my breath, I'm going, "He don't cut his nails. He elbowed my friend. <laughs> <laughs> He's got a horrible cornrows." Actually, you should have said that. Like, ma'am, your son does not cut his fingernails. I, I, I'll, I'll be like, I'm like, I hate his cornrows. And that mask is killing me. <laughs> <laughs> like, excuse me, mama, yeah. uh, I hate everything exactly about right. your son. All that money, and he's got those cornrows that are coming out. Go get a fresh cornrow. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hashtag Ask Mason. Does Desmond Mason, this is from JR, does Desmond Mason ever see himself going into coaching? Uh, no, not, you know, not, not now. I, uh... I had a chance right after. Wait till your boy gets older. Yeah, well, no, I don't, I'll never coach my kid. Never. Really? No, I never coach my son. Um, but I, uh, I remember when I was leaving Oklahoma City. You know, Scott talked to me about possibly coming back and coaching in Oklahoma City, and and you know, I've it's, it's been thrown around tons of times in Stillwater and a couple other places. But I just, you know, it's it's not in me. You know, I just you, a coach is a special person, man. They 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 are they're very very good at what they do and. I'm not going to pretend I'm a coach. I think I know the game, but, you know, coaches are special people. I, I respect coaches a lot. I couldn't imagine. I, I, I couldn't imagine. I'm too intense. And and uh, with me, the one thing that I know I would fail at is recruiting. Yeah. Like, I can't – I'm not a sales guy. I'm just not. Like, you know, the same recruiting pitches for kid after kid after kid. That, like, well, you know, I mean, and you throw out all the stats about your school. Like, well, we were, you know, we've been number two and the top two yeah. in the Big 12 for the last 10 years. And, like, I, you know. I, I, I tell can't. the truth. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be honest. You know, if I, if I feel like, I'm, I would tell them, like, listen, we have a really good team. You know, you're probably not going to start with us. Right. And that might you know, not be what they want to yeah, hear. Yeah, that's not what they want to hear. Right. I know. But, you know, some people respect that. Some people don't want you to tell them what they want to hear. And that was me. I, Coach Sutton told me, like, you, you're probably not going to start on my team. We actually got a uh, tech. I'm sure you've been asked this before, but, um, well, I know you've been asked before. I just don't know how many times on this air. Uh, hashtag ask Mason, what's his best Eddie Sutton story? Um, I'm going to say... Uh, let me see, because there's, there's so many of them. You all ought to see the smile there's on his so face. Many. Like, there's this conniving <laughs> grin <laughs> on Desmond like, Mason's face. It's like, a, well, here's a good one. I'm gonna, like, I'm gonna try to do my fake Eddie Sutton voice. Yeah, um, I love fake Eddie Sutton. Um, so, so <laughs> Coach Sutton gets, you know, I get into it with Keontae Roberts, and Coach Sutton knew my dad really well, and Coach, he was really hard on me. Uh, so it was Keontae's senior year, and we get into a little bit of a, you know, tiff on the court, and Coach Sutton, and it was Keontae who started it. He started it. Yeah, right. He yeah. did. I promise you. He he always started because he knew I was coming to take his position. And so um, Coach Sutton gets mad and he comes out, storms out on the floor and is like windbreaker that's making that <laughs> sound the whole entire way out on the court. And he, he Wish goes, washing? Yeah, just, oh, man, it's an old Nike one too. And he's got the big afro and he's like, Desmond, let me tell you, brother, you hadn't done anything. I will run your ass back to Waxahachie, Texas. Then he called my dad. From the from the media table on the phone, I sat in my practice uniform while the rest of the team practiced, and my dad scolded me on the phone. 
Really? Hey, yeah, he called my dad. And then my dad. Just wrote, because you got into a fight. He, and, told, he, told, he told my dad, he's like, I'm about to send Desmond home. And I'm like, what did I do, coach? He's like, don't talk to me. Just keep your mouth shut. <laughs> like, How'd that conversation go with your dad? Oh, uh, he was like, boy, you want to come back home? You want to come live at Waxahachie? And I'm like, yeah, no, 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 I'm good. I'm good. Stillwater is just as big. I'm, I'm totally good. <laughs> oh, it's the same man. thing. I just got class. That is good. <laughs> All right, we still got these flying in. Um, we'll do those, but we're going to take a break, and we'll do them. We'll see if we can't maybe try to mix in a little bit of uh, of Des painting and asking these questions. This will not be easy for him. <laughs> but we'll see if maybe we can do a little bit of both of those. Multitask. Uh, that's right. We'll do some multitasking coming up next in the franchise. Now back to Zach McCright and Todd Listenby on Oklahoma's new sound for sports, 1077, The Franchise. Desmond Mason's with us. We're going to do a couple more Ask Mason's here in just a second. I wanted to uh, ask you, though, um, one of the things I forgot about the Thunder. Um, you have got – now, You now this didn't happen when you were in the league uh, with these week-long all-star breaks. I mean, you're getting a full week now. That yeah. didn't that, that, that didn't used to happen. It was like four days maybe? Yeah. yeah Something I mean, like that? Yeah, you normally played a couple of days after the Sunday game. Yeah, this yeah. is – the Thunder, at least this year, get three off before the game and three off after the game. Um, so they, they go a, a, a full week. They play on the 11th, and they don't play again until the 19th uh, of February. But um, this year there is – I don't – and you got to tell me how how often this happens. I, I would assume it doesn't happen very often. But they play Utah tomorrow, and then they're off for five. So they play the ninth and come back on the 15th wow. and play. Um, so they play Friday, and then they don't play again until Thursday. Now, do you ever remember having a break like that? Every once in a while, you did. Not It doesn't happen very often. Five days seems like a really long time. Yeah. And know, then, to be but but it, it happened. No, I'm not going to say it, it never happened. It, it happened. And then how did that work um, in terms of your, your time off? I mean, how many days did you get? I'm, I'm, always, I'm curious. My, the reason I ask, I wouldn't ask any other time, but I, especially with the way they're playing right now, yeah. um, that's a little bit of it. But I don't think that would matter too much. But then on top of it, you kind of got this Deion Waiters thing, and I don't know if would it, would it, would that matter? Would a coach want to bring you back a day early to kind of maybe work out some kinks there? I, I don't know how that works. Do well, you? Let's just say with that five days, I'm just gonna pretend I'm Scott Brooks. Like with the five days right after the game, it's a complete day off. Don't even come in the gym. Stay at home. Right. Do nothing. Um, the next day, you know, you have guys come in. They'll do a workout, get some shots up. You know, maybe watch some film of the Utah game or a couple of games. You know, get some splice tapes put together and watch some things that they need to work on. But that's it. Just you know. Work out, get your shots up, be in the gym an hour, and, and go back home. Again, continue to rest your legs, get any treatment you need, massage, whatever. On that third day, you have the guys come back in, kind of do the same thing, but you start getting Dion acclimated to the offense. So you take the second unit to one end of the floor, and they just start running plays so he knows the plays, um, you know, for when they come back after those days. Day four, it's full-blown practice. You know, you're back into practice. So you get some rest in the legs, but you got guys keep their timing and their rhythm, um, and you spend a good day of getting Dion acclimated to the offense, and it keeps those second-unit guys also um, in the flow of things. But that fourth day, you're probably coming in full offense, I mean full practice, some scrimmaging, Doing your scouting reports, getting ready for the upcoming team. Then you have you have another you have another day after that. Would you just uh, yeah? Or would be, you scale it, it, down? It, it, or? It'll, be, it'll be another practice, but it probably won't be as ten, intense as day four. But you know, it'll be really just starting to prep. You know, that day you'll probably go over the opposing team's offense. Did you did you ever feel any rust after long breaks like that? No, not if you did it that way. Most coaches I played for, they would do something similar to that. I don't know. Again, five days, I can't remember a lot of those those, but. Um, I never did, you know. I never – I was always in the gym, though. I mean, I just stayed in the gym. What would you do during all-star breaks? Um, I would – I mean, most of the time – If you weren't if you weren't yeah. participating. Well, after my third year, I stopped completely. So what I would do is I would normally go on a vacation somewhere for a couple of days and then get back to the city I play in and get back in the gym a day or so before the rest of the guys start to get back in town. What day or what place? Where'd you go? Um, Where would you go? Well, once, you know, once I got my house in Mexico, it was pretty much Mexico, but we took some trips to the Bahamas once. Um – the Pacific Northwest when we were playing over in Milwaukee because we you know, knew so many people in that area. We'll go out to San Diego or Santa Barbara, um, Ooh, you know, nice. but just for like a couple of days to get away completely just to decompress from the game of basketball and um, play some golf and 
not hear Eric the Red stories. It's so good. <laughs> all right, all right, get your get your paint. Okay, out here. Man, let's do this. Let's do this. All right, we're, we're gonna do about five minutes of painting here with Desmond Mason, um, and we're gonna we're gonna try to ask him. And you don't even have to face the microphone. I mean, you can just like just gotcha. keep it there. Just keep on talking, and we'll pot you up, and I'll move away so so you don't. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> you, you playing Millie Vanilli again? Oh. <laughs> you have to bring you have to bring him down a little bit. There you go. In fact, if I move this far go. over, there we go. This will be good here. All right. Let me see. I'm put it so let's do this. And, I, again, we will take another picture. You'll probably have to do what you'll have to do here, Rough Face, is just every time I talk, you'll probably have to bring his mic down. And when I'm done, you'll have to pot it back up. You'll just have to pot Desmond's mic up and uh, up and down the, the entire segment. Now you're going to have to really work. Look at you while you're playing Millie Vanilli. All right. Um. Let's do a couple more Ask Masons first. Says, this is from Jerry. Hashtag Ask Mason. Your art hanging at the Louvre or NBA championship? Uh, that's tough, man. That is a really good question. I'm going to say... Um, <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to say my art hanging in the Louvre. That's a that's a big deal. I mean, that's those how, many, are, how many how many championships do I have to give you? Um, three Pete, and I'll give up the Louvre. Oh man, <laughs> three Pete! Oh man, that's a lot of rings. God dang! <laughs> He's got plenty of fingers. He says plenty of fingers. I tell you what, this is what we'll do. We'll just all we'll just do this all on one mic. How about that? There we go. All right, here we go. Um. Hashtag Ask Mason, if we bundle Lamb, Jackson, and Jones, who do we get as a $6 million man? You think that's happening? Um, that's probably not going to happen, but I still always talked about, um, I don't think he's $6 million, you can get him for less, but a guy like Reggie Evans, um, super strong, rebounds everything, could care less to shoot. He's actually finishing better around the basket. Still not a good free throw shooter, but just a tough guy that, you know, he's a big enforcer inside. He'll guard just about anybody. And I think Oklahoma City needs a guy like that. You know, you got to have one of those guys that you can just have, just battle and, and eat glass. And um, they haven't had one of those guys since the organization has been here, honestly. All right. Uh, let's see here. Hashtag Ask Mason. Are you concerned by the Thunder body language lately? They look disinterested. Absolutely. That's what, you know, we talked about that earlier. I definitely think that. Um, you know, the way they're starting the games, they're, you know, their backs are against the wall. They're letting teams jump out on them. You know, there's no intensity and aggressiveness. And that's just not on the culture, you know, as this city knows it. So it's a little bit concerning because, I mean, guys are a little bit disinterested in, in, uh, in competing. And that's not at least some guys. And, and that's not what you want. You know what? what I, you know what I'm doing, Rough Face, is I am, I, I am inter basically I'm interrupting him. This is, this is too... No, I know, but it's but it's tough. Like you're you're having to actually. I mean, you're thinking about these questions and you're trying to give thoughtful responses. And I mean, you've well, got a good though. You got a piece to work on no, here. It's good. It's helping. It's helping me create. Uh, all right. All right. Okay. So, all right. We'll, we'll keep going then. Uh, let's see. Desmond Mason with us. We're doing a little hashtag Ask Mason here. Let's see what we got here. Uh, <laughs> if the <laughs> if the Bucks can sign Kenyon Martin. Why can't D. Mason sign with the Thunder again? Because <laughs> D. Mason doesn't want to. And Sam has the direction. So I think, <laughs> I think we're good. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, hashtag ask Mason, why no zone defense for the Thunder? Or follow your shot for offensive rebound? Oh, I know the answer to one of those. Or follow your shot for offensive rebounds. Uh, follow your shot because they need to get back on defense, which has obviously been a little bit of an issue, transition defense. And then... Um, the zone, I don't think they, you know, the team, they're, they're healthy. So they use the zone because they were lacking bodies and now they're healthy again. So I don't, I don't think they necessarily want to play zone. I think it's, you know, you can't compromise a lot of things with playing zone. So, uh, you know, it's a Scott decision and, and he knows his team best. This is a thoughtful question coming up here. I, well, at least it is to me. Of course, I know very little about, uh, about performing art, but, um, it says, do you, is there a certain shape that you go to more than others when painting? Uh, it's a circle. I normally uh, do. I, just, I'm, I have a series now, the longest running series I've ever created. It's called The Circles of Life. 
Um, I just opened it up again. I closed it in 2007 and then opened it back up in 2014. And it was part of my show in Cabo. Um, and now I have um, 18 or 19 of those pieces. Really? Right now, complete um, and sold. And, you know, some of them sold. And I, I think I got about four or five more. But um, I'm going to continue the series. So the circle is always one I go toward for sure. Yeah. See, I'm, I'm, I'm into that. I'm a, I'm a shapes guy. That's what I am. I'm a shapes guy. <laughs> um, let's see. Any other good ones here? Um, <laughs> some of these questions are ridiculous, but we'll ask them anyway because why not, right? Um, ask Mason, what's the craziest vehicle someone used to get around the arena? Oh. Tank, helicopter, Segway? Hey, you know what? Helicopter. And not around the arena. Kobe, because he didn't want to drive in, tra- in L.A. traffic, used to f- chop her in from his house. That was about a half an hour away from Staples. Um, he used to fly a helicopter in, and they would land it um, on a pad, a medical pad near the arena. And he would. He would I mean, come <laughs> on. But I'm like, dude, just buy a condo and like, right, go like down. get get one no. across the street. Because he's Kobe. Like, I'm gonna fly in, you know, Night Wolf, to come in <laughs> <laughs> and, and go to the game. Oh <laughs> man, Airwolf, not Night Wolf. Airwolf. Airwolf. That's yeah, right. Airwolf That's right. Yeah, the Maverick. Go ahead. Um, all right. Well, I think that'll do it. You got any questions for him, Rough Face? How you feeling? You feeling good? I think we do. I think you, we, uh, do you bag or mulch? What's that mean? Like when you mow your lawn? Do you not mow your oh, lawn? Oh, when you mow your lawn, yeah, do, you do you bag, bag or, or mulch? mulch? Um, that I mean, I, I, you, have, I have no idea. <laughs> He's got a guy. He's got a guy, rough face. I'll give, let me text real quick, and I'll get. <laughs> He'll let you know here in about five minutes. Well, when I, back in the day, I, back in the day, we used to bag. When me and my brother did it at Walks and Hackey, we would totally bag. Yeah, my dad always made me bag too. I hated that. <laughs> but then when I got my own house, I totally mulched. <laughs> totally mulched. I went. I went 100% lazy. It was, and it was great. I enjoyed it thoroughly. All right, Mace, you can work on that a little bit longer if you want to. I mean, unless you got somewhere to be, but uh, we got to go to break. We got to go to break. But it's been good talking to you again. Always good, man. Always good. Always Thank good. You. Desmond Mason, everybody. Desmond Mason uh, here in studio on 1077 The Franchise. Hey, and we're looking for your feedback, too. Do you enjoy this? Like, this is not your typical, like, you know, just mm, let's talk basketball for an hour. Let's talk X's and O's. Let's break down the game. Like it's not like that. But do you, could, give us criticism, positive, negative, constructive, whatever. Um, yay or nay on on this type of stuff because we want to know. Like, like we we enjoy it, but we don't know if anybody else enjoys it. So it. so let's uh, let let us know at Big Easy at D Mason Art and uh, and and on the text line as well.